So, what I want to talk to you about today, as, as up on the board, I'm probably not going to get through all these slides. I like to tell stories. I like to talk. Uh, I am from Boston, so that means I don't pronounce my R's. I'm going to work really hard on that, so bear with me. Um, but what I do want to do is talk about a growth mindset. As a principal, I used it, and it works with all kinds of kids. All kinds of kids. Okay? It's a method of feedback, but it's also a method of being. Okay? It's also a method of being. So, wait for my next slide, sorry. Here's a thought to begin. I always like to bring, begin with a thought. Okay, it's been around for a while. Sir Isaac Newton. Think about the students, the children you work with. And as Stephanie said, the walls that exist for them. Okay? Seriously, if I say to you right now, picture a student that you work with, one is popping in your head right now, I can guarantee it. Right? There are walls for that student in school, possibly in the court system, possibly in the social service system, possibly within that child's family, okay? There are walls that exist. And it's our job as educators, as people who work with children, to build bridges for those students. To build bridges. I'm gonna give you a story. Here's my story. 10-foot bridge. I had a student, Robert. I'm in a pretty affluent town, mostly white, but there's one housing project where we get most of the students that come into our school. Robert's mixed race. Robert comes from us from another community, from another community, went to kindergarten, he's going into first grade. My psychologist and I take time to meet him during the summer, his file is this thick. He's six years old, okay? Robert has witnessed his uh, mother be beaten by his father his entire six years. He suffers from post-traumatic stress syndrome. We're going to do everything we possibly can to help Robert. I work with teachers. I work with crisis teams. We develop incentive programs. We develop community within his classroom. So all, his, all the students in his class treat him as a member of family, even though he might stand up on the table and swing things and yell out words and curse. We do that for two straight years with him. Unfortunately, medications he's given, mood disorders he has, 45-day medical placement, we cannot service him to the best of our ability. We do not have the resources. I'm going to give everything I have to this child because it matters to me. And as I used to say to my staff, what we do for the least of us, we do for all of us. Because everybody's watching, and they should be. Okay? So Robert, we have an IEP meeting with him. It's decided he has to go out of district for his services. Okay? But his after-school program, which is run by another agency, but it's in my school, I'm making sure he gets to that back to my school for after school. I want him at my school because I want to be connected to him, and his mother needs to be connected to us, and we need to continue to help him that way. So I have to pick up the phone, I have to bang on doors. You would think something as easy as getting a van to your school from four towns away would not be that hard, right? But you know that, right? You know that, I see heads shaking. You would think it'd be simple. The process is in place, the system's in place that put the walls up. Okay? So I'm, I make it happen. Robert goes to out of district, talk to the van company, talk to the after school program. We're good, Robert's coming Monday. Van pulls up, van driver will not walk him in. After school company won't go get him. He's 10 feet from my building, 10 feet. He's asleep, he's exhausted. Who gets him? I get him, right? I'm the principal, it doesn't matter to me. It's my duty, it's my honor, it's my passion. It's why I'm here today. So I tell this to my staff and I say it to everybody, it is our job to create 10 foot bridges. You do that, right, every day. Sometimes the bridge is five feet, sometimes it's 105 feet, sometimes it's 100 miles it feels like. But that's our job, to create bridges. Too many walls, too many systems in place, like Stephanie said, that get in the way. We need to get back to the children and empower them as best as we can, as Deborah said, right? We need to empower them. And we need to build bridges. I love that graphic. So, let me talk about some concepts. I am never gonna get through all these slides, but I'll get through as many as I can, all right? I'll tell stories along the way. So, what I would like you to get to today is to understand the concept of a growth mindset. Some of you may already have that, some of you may not, 
but I'm at least going to give us a baseline for the afternoon session or the morning into afternoon sessions. And then I'm going to talk about something specific I want you to try. I want you to walk away with techniques to give students feedback to help them be their very best. Okay? Now, it's not going to occur in a vacuum. We know these kids have lots of things going on in their lives every day, but it's something that's under your control. And maybe you can push it into the schools where the kids are at. Maybe you can talk to those teachers and those principals. I would hope that would happen. I go around the country. I'm coast to coast. I love having little soldiers walk out and then get back to me and say, help me out. Help me get this in the school. Absolutely. So when you come to the uh, breakout sessions, I'll have cards available. Please take one. I like to continue the conversations. All right. So I'm going to talk about what mindset is, the different types of feedback and their effects. There are all kinds of feedback, okay? And changing your feedback. And I know this, because I did this in a whole school, changing your feedback is not as easy as it sounds. We are all triggered to say good job for some reason, right? It's an automatic with most of, most of us. What is good job? If I'm a kid, I have no idea what, my, what part of my job was good. Tell me something specific so I can help change myself. That's the feedback I wanted as a principal when I met my superintendents. It was just a rubric and they were check marks. It made no sense to me, right? <laughs> Report card comments to kids make no sense to them sometimes. What teachers say or don't say, don't say because of their belief system is important. So examining mindsets, they're important. Does anybody know what a growth mindset is? Please feel free, it's okay. If you wanna shout it out, I don't need to raise a hand. Growth mindset, anybody? Familiar with it? or just afraid to call it out. Go ahead, sir. Uh, it talks about, you know, that no matter what the skill or practice is, that you can develop it through hard work and a, and a mindset that, you know, I can learn piano even at my age, whatever it is. Carol Black talks a lot about it. Yes, yeah, she does. I'm going to see a picture of Carol in a second. Excellent segue. What's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> there it is. Simple definition. It is the, the, the belief, the understanding that develop, that, uh, we can develop our abilities, period, period. Guess who I, get to, I got to talk with last month? Brad Stevens. Anybody know who Brad Stevens is? Yes. Oh, five minutes, I thought we were raising your hand. <laughs> I'm way out of time, there's no way it's gonna be done. I got to redo my afternoon performance now. Brad Stevens is a coach of the Boston Celtics. Took Butler University, tiny school, division one, to the final game, two years in a row. What is his method of feedback to his players? Growth mindset. Growth mindset. I said, Brad, really, does that work for pro athletes? And he said it's the only thing that works because all these athletes, are, uh, they've been successful their entire lives until now. Until now. Okay. So Carol wrote a book, Dr. Gwe Dr. Dweck out of Stanford. Mindset, about 20 years ago almost. And we've been doing the work ever since. Man, I'm so not going to make 20 minutes on this, but that's okay. I got more to talk about in our, in our afternoon sessions. So quickly, I'm going to show you, uh, uh, maybe get to the video. I'll, show, I'll end with the video quickly. But fixed mindset, your intelligence is there. Boom, you cannot grow it, right? Belief systems that kids have. Some kids have a belief system they're not good at math because based upon the color of their skin, because they look around in advanced placement class and don't see faces like their own. Right? That's a belief system. Parents say to me all the time, ah, you know, my kid's not that good at math, neither am I. Where's the math gene? <laughs> It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So, we talk about abilities can grow. Simple, right? Hmm, not so simple. When you get into it, it becomes very challenging. But it starts with the belief. I believe each one of you in this room can grow. Period. I believe you can become whatever you want. When I taught fifth grade, first day of class, I had a tie. Little jobs all over the tie. And I would say to the kids, I believe in you. I want you to become whatever you become in your life. Not just in fifth grade, for the rest of your life. I want you to remember the lessons you've made with me, because I'm going to remember them. Because I had lots of kids teach me lots of things that I had no, not, no idea about. City of Boston, fifth grade, 900 kids, five classrooms. Who got the five classrooms of the toughest kids the first year? Talk about walls. We didn't have a fourth wall. My fourth wall was the hallway. It was an open concept classroom. Guess who was next door? 
the music teacher. <laughs> Guess who applied for the job and she didn't get it for fifth grade that I got? The music teacher. <laughs> music was kind of loud that year. Best compliment I ever got, end of the year she came to me. She said, I listen, you teach every day. You never stop believing in those kids. You never stopped, Anthony. It was the greatest, one of the greatest compliments I ever received. But it starts with a belief. I believe in you, all right? I believe in you. And when you come to the breakout session, I'm gonna rearrange my presentation really quickly because I didn't get half my slides. <laughs> but that's okay, okay? So we're gonna talk about failure. We're gonna talk about empowerment. We're gonna talk about how to get around the walls and build the bridges. And I'll try to pronounce my R's. Thank you so much.